Welcome to The Secrets of Modern TV. Now we will look at ideas about putting music to a movie. We will find that some of those ideas have been used in theatrical performances already hundreds of years ago. If you like this video series and are interested in movie making, subscribe to my channel and consider liking this video. How are movies and music combined? Sometimes we think of music to create a certain emotion. A laugh song, for example, will in most cases be soft and slow and put you in a somewhat cozy mood. So looking at the mood of the scene and then looking at the mood of the music you want to combine with the scene is of course an absolutely basic technique for putting music to a movie scene. To a laugh scene you would probably have a laugh song or some other soft tender music that works well with the laugh mood of the scene. To an action sequence, on the other hand, you would probably put in energetic, fiery, intense music. It is really important in art theory to understand that different arts have a connection in their ability to transport moods. Let's see a few examples for this mood technique. Here we see a scene from the laugh movie When Harry Met Sally. In this scene, at the end of the movie, Harry came to understand that he loves Sally and he walks up to her in order to tell her that he loves her. The music that was chosen for this scene is a calm, sweet love song. Give me a thrill With all your thoughts I love you still The next scene is from Indiana Jones 3, The Last Crusade. We see the young Indiana Jones ride on a horse as he is chased by some people in a car. The music to this action scene is energetic and of a fast tempo. Music can also evoke feelings. In the next scene from the movie Spartacus from 1960, we see the Roman army approach the army of Spartacus' slave uprising. As the Roman army draws closer and closer to the hero of the movie, the music is threatening and dramatic. So with those examples, we have seen how music is often used according to the mood of the scene. But music can not only evoke moods and feelings. In some cases, the instruments used can also remind you of certain situations. You could think of a jungle scene combined with the sound of bongos. Or a scene set in Scotland combined with bagpipe music. As we will see in the next example, which is again from the movie Spartacus, but a few minutes earlier, we see the Roman army approach and the music that is played during that scene features instruments that real armies used to play during their approach. In this case, drums and brass instruments. So the sound itself directly reminds you of an army because of the instruments used. So far we have seen the techniques of putting music to a movie that in a way just plays music during a scene. Now we come to the question of how much the rhythm of the movements in the scene and the events taking place should run exactly parallel to the music, in the sense of the music actually mirroring the scene or playing exactly at the same time as things also happen in the scene. In the 19th century, people like, for example, Richard Wagner or Adolphe Appia wanted art to be a Gesamtkunstwerk, a total work of art. That means that they wanted to take several art forms and blend them together in the theater. They wanted to combine the dramatic action of the plot, 
the speaking or singing, the music, the movement and even the lighting to one total artwork. They wanted that all those things run partly parallel to each other. Let's have a look at a scene from a Spider-Man movie in which the music is matched to the movement of the character as Peter Parker climbs up a wall. In modern movies, people speak their lines and they do not sing them. Around 1850, Richard Wagner composed operas and he said about those operas that they are actually supposed to be theatrical pieces that melt together the art of singing, the art of acting out a story and the art of music to one total work of art. Since in Wagner's theatre the speaking of the characters is sung, the lines of the actors completely match the background music. The background music and the speaking run parallel in Wagner's operas because they are composed as one musical piece with lyrics. Let's watch a scene from a modern staging of a Wagnerian opera in which the god Wotan speaks to a character called Loge. Let's see how the lines of the characters match the background music as they are composed together. And also let's see how at some point the character Loge walks across the stage away from Wotan and this walk is accompanied by the background music as probably the director of the modern staging told the actor to cross the stage at exactly this time parallel to the music. In the next scene from the movie The Avengers, we see Thor talk to Loki. Then Loki walks away from his brother and as in the scene before, we can see that the orchestral background music matches the walking across the stage. You miss the truth of ruling, brother. The throne would suit you ill. I've seen worlds you've never known about. I have grown, Odin son, in my exile. So music can not only be played loosely in the background. It can also be matched to the movements in the scene. But there are some things that we want to note about the technique of matching the sound and the movements. Adolphe Appia, around 1900, talked about how to stage Wagner's operas. And he then planned to completely match movement and gestures of the actors to the music. Also, he wanted to completely match the changes in lighting to the movement and the music. So movements would have been running along to the music as well as the ever-changing light. This idea becomes understandable if we remember the complete matching of the talking and the music in Wagner's operas that we have seen before. It was just the idea to even more match all components that make up a theatrical piece to become one total work of art. So Apia planned to let the movements be completely parallel to the music. Then about 40 years later, in the 1940s, two other artists talked about how to match music and movement. The composer and musician John Cage 
and the choreographer and dancer Mears Cunningham. And they followed a completely different strategy. They planned to just not let the music and dance fall completely together. So they created performances in which music would play and the dance would be danced, but instead of making the dance follow the music, they said that both arts should not be too much connected, but rather be independent of each other. They described it as if both arts, that of music and that of dance, would just be done in the same room, so that both arts share a common space, but so that each art has enough room to unfold itself without being matched to the other art. Later they also got set designers to build stages for their performances and also then tried to just not match the set design to the dance too much and also not to the music too much. So let's see an example of John Cage playing the piano as Mies Cunningham dances to see how those arts are not matched but just share the same room. <laughs> So we got both those ideas, to completely match movement and music and to deliberately not match it to each other. Now in cartoon movies we sometimes see it that movement of the characters and the music matches completely. Let's see an example for this complete matching from a Popeye cartoon. Because of its use in cartoons, the technique of excessively matching physical movement and sound is sometimes called Mickey Mousing. So we saw that the music and the scene can be matched by the mood. And we saw that we can also match music and scene by the movement of the characters. And also we have seen that sometimes we might want to not match too exactly to leave some room for each art to unfold. Now there's yet another way of matching music and scene apart from matching the music to the movement of the characters and that one you could in some way refer to as matching the music to the movement of the story. Let's have a second look at that Spider-Man scene that we saw before. There's not only the connection between the music and Peter Parker putting his hands to the wall. Right before Peter climbs the wall, he looks up and between the houses he sees the sky. The whole scene here can well be understood as a metaphor, an image. In the story, Peter feels trapped as he feels his life is not going anywhere. So in the scene, he is surrounded by the brick walls of the houses. Then he gets his superpowers to climb walls and as he looks up, the sky can be seen as an image for a new hope, a new way for him to live his life. So here the images are matched as metaphors to the meaning of the story. Being surrounded by houses refers to his restricted life. The blue sky, the limitless sky, refers to his new possibilities and his new life. So the scene tells an important story event. It is the discovering of a better way for him to live. And so, as the sky appears in the image, we hear a sound running parallel to just this development that the story presents at this moment. In the next example, again from Indiana Jones 3, the young Indiana Jones is in a train, chased by the bad guys and crawling over a small bridge that hangs over an alligator and snakes. Indiana Jones nearly slips down 
and we see the alligator. So the story presents a danger. And running along with that, the music makes a somewhat alarming sound. Indiana crawls on and nearly slips again. This time we see snakes under him. And again the music plays an alarming sound. Now we come to a scene from Star Wars Episode 6, where the music is matched to a story event and at the same time is matched to the thoughts of the main character as they represent an important decision he takes in the story. The scene starts with the bad guy telling Luke to use his magic and let his lightsaber fly into his hands so that Luke can attack the bad guy. Luke has all the time resisted to follow this suggestion to attack the bad guy. Because if he does, he would be overwhelmed by his own aggressive feelings and then he could become a slave to the evil magic that the bad guy has. So the bad guy tells Luke to attack him, trying to make Luke evil and then make him his follower. As the bad guy talks, first we hear dark, threatening music running along with the mood of the scene. Strike me down with all of your hatred, and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. So now, Luke should not let the lightsaber fly into his hands and attack. But the bad emperor has teased him for a long time. So Luke turns away, and on the movement of turning away, we hear a sound. And then Luke decides to attack the Emperor, turns around and uses his sword. And right before he takes his sword, on that story-relevant decision to attack, we hear a sound. The sound does not run parallel to his attack. The sound runs parallel to the decision to attack, parallel to the movements of his thoughts, if you so want. Now we have music moving to the movements of the people and objects, to the movements of the story and to the movement of the thoughts of the characters. Now let's look at musical change. Let's see three scenes now where the music changes along with the events and with this get an idea of the use of changes in music. In the third Indiana Jones we see Indiana Jones and his friends discover a group of people who want to steal treasures. As the camera pans from Indy and his friend across the cave to finally show the robbers, the music gets louder. Also, the music that gets louder is suspenseful according to the mood of the story at this point. The music indicates that we are waiting to see something and then we see it. Now the robbers have found a valuable artifact in the cave. Indiana does not want them to steal it, so he sneaks in and takes the artifact to secure it. The first part of the music is matched to his carefully trying to sneak away unseen, but then the robbers see him and he runs out of the cave and a chase starts. As he jumps out of the cave and the chase starts, the music changes to a faster paced music. Then the robbers chase him onto a train and they fight on top of the train. In the train happens to be a rhino. The rhino pierces the roof with its horn. At some point, 
the rhino pierces through the roof right between Indy's legs. At this somewhat comical point, the music changes to no music for a few seconds. Now finally we come to look at the third technique of film music. After matching the music to the mood and matching the music to the movements. And the technique we want to look at now has to do with matching the melody of the music to the movie. And for that we ask the question, what happens when the same melody appears multiple times throughout a movie? People used reappearing melodies in theater plays already in the 16th century. And about 300 years later, in 1850, Wagner talked a lot about what can be done with melodies that appear multiple times. What we will look at now in movies, Wagner described already around 1850, only that he talked about it as a theater technique. For movies were not invented before about 1900. He described a technique common in his time, which today we call Leitmotiv technique. Light is German and means lead. And a motif is a short musical melody. Leitmotiv in English can also be written with an F at the end. Or also can be called leading motif. It is in general a melody that leads the viewer's feeling. Let's look at a scene from Indiana Jones Part 1, Raiders of the Lost Ark. In this scene, Indiana Jones is running away from natives. His friend is waiting for him by a plane. Indy manages to get to the plane, then he escapes in this plane. Now, in some scenes, as soon as Indiana Jones succeeds or is doing something very well, we hear a certain melody. This melody could be called Indiana Jones Triumph Melody. And it sounds like this. Now as Indiana swings on a liane towards his plane, this musical motif is played. As he gets away with his plane then, we hear some more modifications of this musical motif. Now often, when Indiana Jones succeeds in his movies, we hear exactly this melody. So the mood of the scene, in this case a feeling of success, becomes more and more connected to the melody. The melody is repeated so often to similar events that it is in a way for the viewer as if such an event itself would just make this sound. So that if at a certain point the melody is repeated to the next success scene, the melody then already carries the connected meaning from before, as it just became the sound that Indiana's success makes. By that, the intended feeling is created by two sources, the scene and the sound with the meaning. The musical motif, the light motif, is here used to enhance the evoking of feelings by becoming a second source of the same feeling. In general, a leitmotif must not be a melody. Actually, you could also use a returning color or a symbol as a leitmotif. But if you have a musical leading motive, then it is usually a melody or a single chord. A leitmotif can be connected to certain characters 
or objects or to a certain feeling or to events within the story. Or a melody can be connected to a mix of those things. For example, the Indiana Jones motif was connected to the character Indiana Jones, a triumphant action and the feeling of success. Now, movie history has seen many great light motifs. For example, this melody in Star Wars that is played there often when the evil army appears. After the melody is repeated in many scenes, it becomes a feeling in a way as if the bad guys from Star Wars would just happen to make this sound. Or this melody from the shark movie Jaws that is played there often when the shark appears. After this melody is repeated a few times in connection to the shark, it is just as if the shark would just happen to make this sound. Oh God, I swim! Or this melody in Back to the Future that is played there often when things are going well. So this melody comes so often when things are going well that you in a way start to think this is the sound it makes when things are going well in this movie. In the shark movie Jaws, it is in a way as if the shark would just happen to make this specific sound. That means when in the movie you just hear the sound, you already know the shark is coming, even if you don't yet see it. And that gives us another possibility that you can use leading motives for other than just enhancing a feeling. You could play the leading motive as the sound of something, even though that something is not in the scene. But since the sound can be heard, of which the viewer knows that this is the sound that comes from a certain thing, he will think that the thing is close by, because he can in a way hear it. For example, in Indiana Jones 3, right in the same train sequence we saw before, young Indy is suddenly confronted with a lion. He takes a whip from the wall and tries to stop the lion. Now, the whip is one of the classic tools that the adult Indiana Jones is going to use. And even though the scene is not at all triumphant, we hear the Indiana Jones triumph melody, but somewhat played softly. And since the scene is not triumphant, the viewer who knows the melody and its meaning expects Indiana Jones to do such things with great success in the future. You could say the viewer already can hear the future events. Or the viewer can hear how Indy's triumphant moves not yet have their full triumphant sound and so understand the scene as that the young Indy is learning. In the last example now, we will see an excellent use of such a meaningful melody in the first three Star Wars movies. The leitmotiv that we will hear is this one. Now Luke is nice and his father is evil. So Luke follows the way of the good magic and his father that of the evil magic. And Luke is trying to convince his father to become nice and leave the evil path. Now, over the movies, often when the good magic is working or being talked about, we hear this melody. Now, let's hear how this musical motive is played at the beginning of the first movie. We hear the melody in the scene and then a variation of it as Luke steps out into the peaceful double sunset of his home planet. We see the calm nature, the soothing sunset, and the pure look and hear this melody.
afterwards in the movie in even more scenes where the good triumphs, that melody is also played, so that more and more this melody is recognized as the sound of the good itself being successful. Now, towards the end of the third movie, Luke is fighting his father in a sword battle. This scene has most of the techniques of using sound that we talked about here. When Luke pushes his father away with his sword, we have a sound running parallel to his movement. And also, as one would expect, the sound matches the mood of the sword fight of suspense and action. Then Luke jumps up onto a gallery. Again we hear sound matching his movement of jumping up and landing on the gallery. And as Luke jumps up, the sound even goes higher in pitch. Then Luke talks to his father. That he feels his father's conflict and wish to join the good side. And at this point, the leitmotiv melody of the succeeding of the good starts to play that we just talked about. Now at this point, we do not see Luke's father joining the good side. But yet in the image we see his father take a step towards him and we hear the light motif of the good side succeeding. So the sound makes us understand something that is not shown in the image and that is that the good triumphs and Luke's father will be convinced to join the good side. But first he turns away from the good side once more. The sound changes to a dark music again, according to the mood. Then Luke's father throws his sword and we hear music running parallel to the movement of the impact of the sword and we hear music running parallel to the movement of Luke and the gallery coming down. So let's watch the whole scene. Thoughts betray you, Father. I feel the good in you, the conflict. There is no conflict. You couldn't bring yourself to kill me before, and I don't believe you'll destroy me now. You underestimate the power of the dark side. If you will not fight, then you will meet your destiny. <laughs> So this concludes this video about the use of sound in movies. We have seen how the sound usually runs parallel to the events of the movie. We saw that matches can be made with the movements, but also with story events. We have seen how the mood of the scene is usually reflected in the music. And finally we saw how repeating melodies take on the meaning of the scene they are played to and then can be used to speak out this meaning by themselves. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please click the like button.